it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another garden tour. Our January garden tour to be exact. So the first one, 2024. It is about as warm as it gets in January and this week is probably going to be our coldest of the year with temperatures getting down to the 19-ish range in the evenings, uh, which is not cold for a lot of the country, but it is cold for my area and for my plants in my garden. So I may have to come out and do a little covering of things like my hydrangeas and their tender buds at night. Um, and I do have a video on protecting your plants against frost or freeze in warmer areas. If you want to watch that, it was a quick thrown together video in the spring when we got some really low temperatures before I was ready for all my plants to lose their pretty, pretty blooms for the season but it works the same way this time of year. So we're gonna go ahead and do a tour of the things that are blooming, the things that are growing, the things that are starting to wake up for spring because in our zone, our last frost date is March 11th. So in January, we are only two months away from spring and some of our spring things are already starting to put up leaves Mascari is coming up, ranunculus are coming up, foxgloves are still green and getting ready to go. So those cold weather uh, perennials that uh, really come up first in the spring, they are getting ready to go. Uh, Mom and I found the mother load of 75% off plants and we bought a whole bunch of African iris and agapanthus. Um, that are perennials for 75% off. Literally, we spent $40 and we got two, no, five, five gallon size African iris, nine, two and a half quarter size white African iris, and 16 agapanthus. The agapanthus were literally like a dollar and 50 cents each. And these are two and a half quart size containers. I put four of them right up here, you can see them. So we're gonna go around. I Unfortunately, my phone was dead that day and it was just a question of, do we wait for my phone to charge or do we get this stuff planted? And we didn't have time to wait for the phone to charge and my camera was dead. So all filming options were kaput. Sometimes you just gotta get things in the ground, especially with the cold weather coming up. So let's go through the garden, look at all of that. Our milk jugs that we started are also coming up and germinating foxgloves and puppies, those cold weather perennials that I like to plant throughout the garden. So I'll show you how those are doing. I will probably have to cover those or bring them in the shed on those 19 degree nights because um, you can lose a whole crop of milk jugs if they're just not hardened off enough seedlings for that. And down here when you only get like three cold nights, they just can't handle it. That's fine. Put a nice warm blanket over them, they'll be fine. If you live in a zone that's much colder, your milk jugs outside, your seedlings get used to that. I have literally seen people with rows of milk jugs covered in snow and their seedlings are fine. So it's just because it's such an outlier here. I lost several milk jugs last year by not protecting them against those couple cold days. So I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna start down by the shed, start with a, uh, nice little look at our milk jugs and work our way through the garden. Cabbages still look great. The cyclamen are blooming. It is January. A lot of the garden is dead and brown and leaves, but a lot of life is still there. And the best part is that spring is around the corner. Every single little ranunculus leaf that I see is a potential ranunculus bloom. I love it so much. All right, so inside the shed is actually getting quite the work over. If you want to check out that whole series, we've painted, we've put up shiplap, it's becoming usable. But outside the shed, things are really buttoned up for fall. My roses are fully going to sleep. A lot of the mums, the verbena has some green, but I mean, it's dying back. This is a verbena that should come back next year. If it stays green, that's a very good sign. Um, 
These mums are obviously bloomed out and will need to be deadheaded for spring. You can see this ribbon of agapanthus is one of them that I've just put in. It's hard to tell with the uh, leaf clutter litter, but there's a Laura Pedlum here and there's a petunia here, a supertunia pink bubblegum that usually comes back. And then we've got salvia here and all of my foxgloves. I will plant a more detailed swath of foxgloves in here. Since they're biannual, I do just keep replenishing them every year. But this variety that I plant from seed is an F1 variety, which means they bloom the first year. These bloomed for us last year. This year when they bloom, they should be bigger, showier blooms. And then it's very hard to tell, but I have a whole swath of drumstick alliums throughout here. They have this little tiny foliage and then they come up with these tiny little purple polka dot blooms. They're super cute and they kind of go like all around this side of the tree. I've got a peony in here and some iris and a glads. So things that will come up next year, but those drumstick alliums coming up is always nice. We also planted a whole bunch of these white African iris all along the front of the house. This one right here was a small two and a half quart can that I planted last spring. I planted two of them. They did beautifully. They bloomed continuously all season long. And like I said, I got these two plants for like a dollar each. That's $2. This plant was $10 last spring. And what I like about them is they're very, very cold hardy. They can actually handle temperatures down to zero to 10 degrees before they would die back to the ground. And so even in the dead of our winters, when our lowest temperatures are typically around 20, they stay green and upright and then they're ready to bloom in the spring all throughout the first frost and fall. So I like that in our zone, they really give us some nice green in the winter time. And since I got a whole bunch on sale, you can see I kind of put them a lot of places throughout the garden that I need just a little bit of fall or winter vertical, fall or winter vertical interest. That's what I was trying to say. So these three will just keep getting bigger. Eventually I'll probably have to divide them because they will keep spreading out. The label said they can get about two feet wide, um, but I can really let them grow in to as much of the space as they want. This uh, oak leaf hydrangea that's losing its leaves, we planted from a start from mom's house and it was just like one branch and it spread out this much. Again, I'm just gonna let him keep spreading back and out and he can grow as much of this area as he wants. Likewise, the iris can grow this area as much as they want. We've got some yarrows back here and then the foxgloves. And if anything gets to be too big, we will just divide it, move it elsewhere in the garden. As far as the raised beds go, I have ordered seeds. I have ordered seeds that we are going to start soon. I need to clean them out. And then in the spring, we will top dress everything, new bags. We never finished these front three. We just couldn't afford it or three on each side. But this year we'll be filling all the beds and planting all the spaces. I'm really excited. So definitely have to get out here and try to clean up some of this. And I want to, I want to really put down something this year. I've been saying that since we put the raised beds in last year, but I want to put dirt or pea gravel or something down in this space. That's not weeds. Ooh, the sun is going down. It's a pretty picture if you ignore all the dead stuff. You can see I planted my, the two big white African irises on either side of the shed, which is nice. They give me some vertical interest down here when a lot of like my butterfly bush and my roses just go away in the winter. I am never going to have a fully developed garden bed in front of the shed, but I'm just going to keep adding uh, perennials and eventually it'll have a little border around it and they will be defined spaces. But I want to show you on the other side of my gardenia here how much growth we have. 
Let me. These are the poppies. Look at all those little puppies. Sounds like I'm saying puppies. But these are the short poppies. The tall poppies are also growing. And then, most exciting, the foxgloves. So these take longer to germinate, but look at those specks of green in the four corners. They are growing. There you go, that's the money shot. So we have quite a few, I think three rows of foxgloves, one row of tall poppies and a row of short poppies for my garden and my mom's garden. <sighs> Cross your fingers, last year we only had one poppy survive but we only planted four milk jugs. So that's why we planted so many more this year. And like I said, I didn't bring any of them in in the cold weather. So we're gonna, we're gonna try taking better care of them this winter. I'll cover them probably with a warm blanket during those cold nights. And then if somehow we get every single milk jug to survive and we have too many for the regular garden, you can always put some in the cut garden, cut flower garden. If I still have too many, well, we'll give some away. Friends like flowers. We like friends. Oh, this whole area just is a huge mess, but I'm working on it. I'm working my way back. So let's head over this way. My butterfly garden did beautifully throughout the season. All of the dill and the other like host plants for the butterflies or the food plants, not the host plants, were completely eaten down. And I had so many swallowtails this year. So it definitely worked. I'm going to do it again this year. And I think I'm going to plant hyacinth bean on these trellises, which should grow and do beautifully. This half of the garden, my rose that needs, needs to be clipped up to the porch a little. Gar needs clipped back. My cone flowers need clipped back. It is my poor BT. Uh, I always battle the grasshoppers on my cone flowers so bad that I end up just leaving the BT out here in the summer. Probably doesn't need to be here in the winter. Sweet alyssum, which looks fine, but it's pretty much dead, which is infuriating because my mom's still is huge. Literally the middle of January and she has like buds. She has flowers. They're like two feet wide. They are setting seed in her yard. I'm going to go dig those up. The ones she had, we counted yesterday and she had eight little babies in the grass next to her big plants that had like seeded and are now blooming in the grass. So I'm going to dig those up and bring them over here so I don't have to start new ones this year. But these all are still green. So I'm hoping that when the weather heats up, they will come back and be just fine. So cross your fingers, cross your fingers. We have the other side of the iris. I loved just the one iris here, but now that I have three and it fills in this space, I didn't even know I needed that and it's so much better. So my poppies are starting to get a little weathered, but you can see they are still putting off buds and blooms. And so they will continue to do that through spring and probably until it gets really hot, but they're gonna look a little sad until it gets warmer. That's okay. A lot of these things that will bloom from fall to summer um, will look a little tattered and worn in the really cold parts of winter. We just leave them, that's fine. But like my cabbage is growing, all of this, look at this. So I had about, you can see the big ones, maybe eight ranunculus from last year that I planted in the spot. They over summered just fine, growing new foliage now. And then you can see the babies. I planted a whole swarth in between of new corms this year to bolster this up. I want it to be really packed out. And ranunculus will keep naturalizing. And so as long as they want to live here, they can live here. They'll come up and be glorious in the spring. And also, I mean also, ranunculus can really bloom as early as Valentine's Day if they're happy in their place and they're planted early enough. Since mine will grow year round here, I don't ever have to dig them up. They should bloom for us next month, at least the first round of blooms. 
they'll bloom continuously for quite a while. So here's a finger. Here's a finger. I need a break, apparently. Here is hoping that they bloom early, they bloom long, they keep coming back year after year, they naturalize. Tulips and daffodils won't do that in our zone because we don't get cold enough. You have to chill them every single year. I'm going to be planting my tulips next month. Uh, it's a little different in the South, but ranunculus, they love it here and we love them. You can also see that while I have one, two, three agapanthus that were divisions of my mom's plants that I planted two summers ago. One, two, three, four brand new agapanthus. They are bigger and bushier and beautifuler than the ones I've had growing for two years. And that's because mine have died back a little bit for the winter. These were obviously in a greenhouse, but these were on the distressed plant, 75% off rack. I paid $1.25 for this plant. All four of these. Five bucks. The girl at the checkout was like, do you think you'll be able to bring them back to life? They, they're so distressed. And I was like, honey, they're not dead. They're just sleeping. They're not even sleeping that hard. They're fine. If you had more, I'd buy more. I bought 16 of them. I was very happy. <laughs> My pansies look great. My cabbages look amazing this year, which is great because moms are getting eaten alive. Mine got eaten alive last year, so whatever critter was eating mine went to her house. But you can see my two ranunculus that came back from last year. I only planted a few forgotten corms here. And then I planted five more here, 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 and here to kind of ring this area. And you can see the new ones are starting to come up. Ha ha ha. Also have muscari starting to come up by our yarrow, our new yarrow plant. And I have a whole bunch of muscari to plant. So I'm going to have to come in and kind of marry this and then put some more in here and just keep going. These are the kinds of things that you don't have to add in all in one year, but the muscari are coming back. They are naturalizing as long as they bloom for us. Be happy. But I finally cut down my lantana, you can see the garden stops here, but there was leaves all the way under the lantana that came out to here. The lantana was very happy here this year. Should come back in our zone, knock on wood. There was still green at the bottom of the stems when I cut them back, but I wanted to cut them back to see if the muscari under here lived. It did. It's naturalized. I planted five here last year and five there, and I can count right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe twelve. So it's almost doubled. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to add a few more in here. Just keep just adding and adding, adding, and they will keep naturalizing. Eventually, we'll have to divide them, move them about. You can see in this side where there's less sun, there's not as many up yet, but they are. They are coming up, the muscari and some of the tulips from last year. I left a few tulips to see how they do. Usually is not the weather that kills the tulips here. It is the moisture. They cannot handle being moist and soggy. But my hydrangea, look at all the buds. Glorious all down the stems. And this whole whole plant is just beautiful. You can see how big it is. It's not great in the winter because it leaves a big dead spot, but in the summer it is fills in this whole space and it's beautiful enough. It's a lace cap, um, pink hydrangea that I just deal with the dead spot in the winter, but I did plant an iris here. So we have at least a little vertical structure to fill in on this half and one here yesterday. Uh, the pansies, ornamental cabbage. My pincushion plants are still doing okay. Verbena should come back next year. Ranunculus coming up here. Catmint still alive under the under the leaves. 
We've got one agapanthus here, and this is one of the southern living ones. That's a rebloomer. It blooms all summer. So I only was able to afford one of these. It's still doing great. You can see it's put out a second fan since I planted it. And once it gets big enough, we'll divide it. Foxgloves, on the other hand, are still doing great, and they should be huge this year. Lots of blooms. Unlike my Laura Pedlum, that's just huge. I think I probably need to come trim these guys. My butterfly bush is under the Laura Pedlum. My gumfrina that I planted from seed last year. I don't know if it'll come back. Some gumfrina does. I don't know if this one does. So I'm going to cut it back. We're going to see how it does. But I did order three different types of gumfrina to plant from seed for this year. And then we are going to rethink this whole area. I planted lantana here and here, and it did great. But my petunias, while they came up this year, and they usually come back in our zone, they only came back a smidge of the time. And so it ended up being like a beautiful lantana and a beautiful lantana, ringing a ring of dead petunias. And I didn't love that. And my foxgloves that were around this crepe myrtle, I think are about done. They were planted like three years ago. So I'll plant more foxgloves in here this year, but I think I'm gonna move the two lantana maybe back to ring the tree and then bring in something more up here that will do better in this area. I thought this zone, this little ring was more full sun than it is. I think it just is too much shade for the petunias to really flourish. On the other hand, I'm starting to get a handle on the shade garden. In this area under this tree, we've got a butterfly bush. We've got my wine salvia. You can see this was the other iris that I planted last year that was one of those two quart cans. He's big and beautiful now. So I've planted two more down here for some more tall winter interest. My little Nandinas are that beautiful red for the winter color, but they're still little. We just planted those. I had Laura Pedlums down here and they just didn't do well in this much shade. So while these three got big, beautiful, and our beasts, the three down here were really, really, really struggling. So I switched them out for Nandinas. The Nandinas do great, but they're just not as big of a bush. So I'm trying to add in more height in other ways. And in the summer, the salvia gets like four feet tall with burgundy blooms on the ends. And it gives us that tall, big, statuesque uh, Laura Pedlum look without being a Laura Pedlum. It doesn't do that in the winter. So hopefully the iris will help fill in. And we'll just keep adding until we get a better mix. On the other hand, my iris, my little iris down here, these are the big bloom iris doing great. And all around this tree, you can see the green. My cyclamen are literally loving their lives and almost ringing the entire tree now. And they are still blooming, even though it is January. So that was the best decision I've ever made. Now I have a smaller ring inside of the tree of peonies. And so far they're doing really well. I'm icing them every week. If you have not watched that video, we don't get cold enough in the south for our peonies to bloom without ice. So you have to come out and ice them every week in the winter so they think it's cold. <laughs> I have a video on that. It's not hard. You put ice on the peonies. And this will be the third year for some of these tubers or plants. So I'm really hoping that they will bloom this year. Oh, we've got a little hydrangea here. And then the rest is just peonies and iris and foxtail ferns. So we're just going to keep adding the things that can handle this light down here until it's big and full. My Vitex looks like nothing but a stick right now, but it has almost double tripled in size this year and it has a lot of buds on it. So eventually it will cover this whole area and just give us a nice soft look for this half of the house. And that is the whole garden. For January, I am very happy with the blooms, with the plants, with the potential for spring. And it looks like I'm gonna be here all summer this year. We're going on two cruises, but one before summer and one after summer. So I'm really excited to be in the garden for a whole summer. 
means we're going to be able to do a lot of damage, y'all. Either way, you know, growing a garden is not a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And for its third year, I'm really excited. Things are really starting to come into their own. And more than that, I'm just figuring out what does best in which light because this half of my garden is like a full shade garden, hardly any sun. And the other half is a field. It gets full sun and they're very different requirements. So hope you liked this tour. I will be back in February to show you the same thing unless my ranunculus are blooming because it looks the same until spring starts. Bye.